Hello, my name is Josh Bryan, and I'm here today to talk to you about the geocaching merit badge for the merit badge prerequisite workshops that we are currently doing. The geocaching merit badge is one of the newer ones. It's only been out for a couple years. And what it basically is, is a scavenger hunt for the 21st century. What I mean by that is you're going out and looking for caches or treasures. Um, and the way you are doing that is you are using a GPS device similar to this one. Um, for your scavenger hunt. You go online to the geocaching website and you will get a list of coordinates which will take you to the location of a cache or a treasure. Um, for camp you'll be able to do all the requirements but one. That is requirement eight which I'm going to talk about and how you can get that taken care of before you come to camp. So for requirement eight the first thing you're going to need to do is create an online account at the geocaching website. That's www geocaching.com. The accounts are free to create and pretty easy to set up. Once you've created your account, you have four options for this requirement. You only have to do one of them. The first option is requirement A, which requires you to complete a couple caches on the Cache to Eagle series. Um, it requires you to complete three. You can find out more information about the Cache to Eagle series from your local council office. Just give them a call and they will be able to help you with that. What they basically are, are caches at Eagle projects done in your area to kind of pinpoint what those Eagle projects were about. Part of what we'd like to do at camp is have proof of completion of these, of these requirements. The way you would bring proof for that one is after visiting the caches, bring in the coordinates and what you saw there, what the Eagle project was about. Be ready to explain it with your counselor at camp. The second option is to create a scout-related travel bug. What a travel bug is, um, a, it's a, a knick-knack that you will create, give it a option or give it a, a task, and you'll watch it go from place to place. Part of this travel bug will be to require, will require you to buy um, travel bug dog tags. You can buy them at most sporting stores or online at the geocaching website. What they are is a set of tags that's unique. They have a number that you will use to track this travel bug. Um, each number, each travel bug has its own number and that's the way you use it online. It comes with two copies, one for yourself so you remember the number and one that goes with the travel bug. Um, right here I'm kind of showing you the dem a demo travel bug that we've created at camp. This is known as Coat Buddy. Um, and what it is is it's a little piece of our coat course. Um, it will have the travel bug dog tags attached to it so you know the number, and then it has a task. This coat buddy is wanting to visit other high ropes courses or coat courses at other Boy Scout camps. Um, for a travel bug, what you're gonna do is create something and give it a task. Um, the requirement is asking you to do a scout-related task. Um, along with that requirement, you once you have created it, you will release it into a public cache and watch it for, th for 30 days. Um, one month. You'll get to see who takes it and where it goes throughout the world of geocaching. For that requirements proof, you'll go online, print up the log that is online that you've created for it, and you will bring that into your counselor and be ready to discuss it with them at camp. The third requirement is to set up your own public cache, um, which is you go online and you create one, you pick a location, you pick a size and type, and then you will set it up online. Um, part of the requirement is asking you to watch it for 30 days and watch people visit it. Along with that, it is asking you to create a six month maintenance plan. And what that will involve is what you need to do to take care of the cache. Once you release a cache, you're not just done with it. You have to watch it and see if people have problems finding it or if it disappears out in the public. Um, so you'll watch it for 30 days, but make sure you have this six, six month plan for it. The way you'd bring proof in for that is to print up the log of who's visited and the comments that they have posted online. The last one, or the last option is uh, D, which is to not only explain and know what a cash in trash out event is, but it is asking you to partake in a cash out trash out event and then create one for your own troop and the public to view. What that basically is, is you're going to go to a cache that's usually a couple miles off the beaten path in some trail in a park or a forest. Um, and on the way, you're going to be picking up trash. Um, once you get to the cache, you'll open it up and you'll see a trash bag that you can take with you um, to collect more trash on the way out. 
it's a way to promote the you know cleaning up the the environment um, from others. Um, so those are the four options. At camp, we recommend option B, which is the travel bug. Um, we find that to be the easiest. Uh, once you've created the travel bug and released it, you watch it for a month, you see where it goes. And if you decided geocaching is really not for you, there's no maintenance needed for the travel bug. It'll just continue on its path based on the goal that you've given it. Um, you can find out more information about the merit badge and all the requirements in the geocaching merit badge book. Um, which will kind of list the requirements that what needs to be done. You can also find more information with other books like the Geocaching's Guide, um, Complete Guide for Idiots in Geocaching, or you can go online to www.geocaching.org. Please remember to bring proof of completion of these requirements so you can get the merit badge completed at camp. I will see you at Camp Woodsit this summer. Have a good day. Bye.